Villa from Bright Eye here and today we are in Ashby Court uh, near Tipton, Devon and we are looking at getting dressed up for riding um, in the mid-Victorian period. We have two habits for you today, a 50s and a 60s ones and we are looking at getting ready for riding but also to use the habits as some walking outfits and the ways how it was achieved. Um, we are starting very simply. Um, I just have my usual stockings, I have my chemise, I've got my corset. Um, I need to sort of do up a little bit. Um, now, the first mention really of sport corsetry, and I think we have it covered in the 50s and 60s um, skating, was, um, was basically 50s. The elastic, that's the important bit at that time, because it was already used in shoes. I'm not sure, no, my shoes are placed, they're not still elastic. But um, most of the stuff for the 1850s, late 1850s, um, habit and underguns was based on the original treatise from 1857 that mentions corsetry for riding should be shorter and if possible include um, gauze in elastic. Um, that's the elastic corset we had before, which was based on the original. And as you can see, you have elastic gauze at the bust. People walking. An elastic panel at the side. So obviously you can incorporate the suddenly new and fashionable elastic. Originally introduced in Regency time by elastic for men's corsetry. Um, so you can incorporate it in several ways. You can have buster gauze, you can have hip gauze, and that really adds a little bit more comfort and mobility to your corsetry without losing the support factor. So this is a sport corset or, I suppose, a comfortable day corset um, that would work as well. So it's nice and stretchy. This one uh, doesn't have an elastic, but that's my sort of go to equestrian corset a little bit later, I suppose. But obviously has a basque, which wasn't quite a nice and still relatively new 40s, 50s um, idea, like I think, also didn't it? Uh, but yes, it has to be much shorter so that you can sit. It, it has to be comfortable and provide good support. Now, I'm not having any um, sort of matching pantaloons or drawers on me today. I could have shorter drawers, but because I'll be wearing these big pants. I still didn't want to put too much underneath there because that's already going to be a little bit. So traditionally in sort of 30s, 40s, 50s and later, women wore Turkish trousers and pantaloons. Uh, very often they were white with some lace and the same goes for petticoats over that. Or, as other parts in the treaties, use black trousers, black pants and black petticoats because, yes, white lace looks quite nice and dainty when it's clean, but it's going to get really dirty very soon and when it flashes, dirty white is not really, really nice. So you just as well have everything black so it, if it flashes, you don't really know it's there, which makes sense from a practical point of view. So that will be my first bit, which is quite huge pants. Um, and also, it mentions elastics at the cuffs. So these cuffs here are elastic for comfort. They could be um, made into separate cuffs as well and buttoned, but obviously you want to keep it relatively close. And that's just, just cotton, really. Um, they could be made in cotton or in light wool. Later on, and this is quite a sort of, they can be much, much, much bigger, um, to be honest. And obviously throughout this century or throughout the decades, they got a little bit more fitting. And as long as you wear boots, they are fine, sorry, shoes, they are fine, but when you start wearing the boots, you want something that is a little bit more um, cut closer to the calf, which is breeches. But these are just big pants. <laughs> Most of 
the stuff should sit just below the waist so that the waist is absolutely at minimum. So these are my pants. And they're quite comfy. You can do lots of stuff in them. Yeah, that's cool. And again, if you don't have your riding trousers, you would have a few petticoats. If you do have trousers, you just need one petticoat. And again, it has been suggested in the treatise. It's called the Habitant Horse, and the information there is absolutely priceless. It's um, informative, but also very nicely presented, very, very intricate. But it also suggests petticoats, black, especially quilted petticoats, or reinforced petticoats with a reinforced lower edge. This is a bit more than lower edge, but let's look. And the reason is for Riding, you don't really want to flare up too much. This is an original petticoat, so I'm going to do a of changes in it. So that really keeps it heavy. It's not very heavy per se, but I mean, it's not going to fly away with the wind with the first gust. So let's just tie it. Most of the bits here that works. Now, over your corset, you can have the usual uh, corset cover, or you can have a blouse, which I'm having. Mostly because of the blouse, you can use the blouse collar to actually stick out of the bodice instead of pinning a collar blue. So, you just want everything to be secure. And that's something that's starting to be more and more apparent in the equestrian fashions as I've been studying them for my next book, The Equestrian Dressmaker, is the habits get much more severe, especially practical habits for travelling, for hunting. They get really austere and cut and very, very sparse decoration really. Um, and several Sources basically say just no decoration, stick to plain walls, serviceable also broth cloth, um, super fines, twills, um, all kinds of sort of cloth that would be serviceable for several years. Habits would be made by tailors, that, that would be a very expensive article to make, so you would be investing in a habit for several years. If you just go park riding from time to time, it's less important really. Um, and you can get much lighter fabric, especially if you're doing it in the, in the, in the summer. And you can still see on different paintings um, braided habits, braiding remain in fashion for quite some time, but less and less silk and more and sort of less garish as that really sort of goes by. So it's what was really important was the quality of the cut and the fit and the service of it and this well, basically practicality of it. So any sort of serious Amazon would go for the quality stuff. What I might add, maybe for later with the pad. Now normally um, for walking around I would be having a Crimean cage in that book, especially 8057. 80, but it's I wouldn't say impossible to ride with a crinoline cage on, because it is possible, but it is quite dangerous. So this is just a standard crinoline cage. And this one is made of flat steel, which means it's really flexible all the way around. So yes, you can sit in a saddle with it, but you still have the danger of these catching in the pommels. So not only not very comfortable but dangerous. So that is really no no. Um, the wire crinolines would not be able to twist that easily or not at all. I've got a couple of them and they're not as easily manoeuvred as this one. Um, but funnily enough there is a brilliant little report from a newspaper, a published newspaper, about a local um, very fashionable lady who loved riding, but at the same time she didn't want to be seen without one of these because it was so unfashionable to have 
really playing scared with that Quinlan. So when she was staying with her friends in the country, she would ride. But obviously she couldn't ride this one. So what would happen? She would attach her cage to the right side of the saddle, which is when you see that I've got the picture somewhere here because we experimented with that. So basically you just twist it to lay flat and figure eight. And you can just throw it on to a saddle on one side. It will flop a little bit depending how well you tie it on, but it's possible. And then when you are coming over to the station in the stables, you get off, untie it, release the cracker, adjust the cage, and pop it under. Not the easiest way to do, but if you want to set up a fashion, you set up a fashion. Now the skirt here is quite interesting because at the moment it's still set to be on a walking um, layer for the crew. And again, we've already taken some photos of it in the motion, so I'll put it at the end of it. But the produce mentions the length of the skirt is quite long at the time, but also an attachment of tapes, usually seven, eight tapes and loops, so that you can shorten the skirt to a reasonable size. So at the moment, if I put it on, it's still a little bit too long because it's supposed to be on the cage. But you can see it's not that bad. What I'm going to do now is to untie all these so that you have a little bit more of an idea of how long the thing is. It is quite long. Um, made exactly to the measurements specified in the treaties, but and it says, well, don't make it any longer because it's uncomfortable and dangerous, but even that length is quite long on a horse. So no longer, well, so no wonder that this changed with time. I think there are only seven or eight of these. Again, normally you would have a servant with this kind of domestic chores. <laughs> So please excuse the very unhistorical hair. I've realised I'm able to bend it and I left my hair behind. So I have to make do with whatever natural hair I've left at the moment. Which is more than I had six months ago, but it's still growing quite slowly. Works. It also reminds me that I forgot to put my shoe on. So 
so <laughs> shoes on now. Uh, these are just standard walking shoes from American Duchess. And very comfortable. And for riding, you would very often have just shoes that would not interfere with your trousers and petticoats and stuff. Occasionally you would have gaiters if you wanted more protection. That was more often worn for travel and hunting when you when you pass several hours in a in the saddle. Okay, the mask on. Put 
in a moment. And you are ready to get on a horse. I'll put some videos in a second. And after that, we are going to see how to update this habit to the 60s. So, a short break, enjoy the short video, and I'll grab the different bodies. So I choose to put one at the back instead of buttons. So it has buttons here. It has a little funny tail with a sort of semi peplum So the cut and construction of this one is quite interesting. But that's the updated 60s habit. And a little bit. You do have a lot of varieties in hats. You have the shadow hats. Um, you have top hats with a variety of veiling in the time. You also can have a little toque 
um, especially for breaded habit. I think the original of this one has a, has a breaded habit. Just this one. Um, but more and more fashionable all over the time, top hat and little bowler hat. Um, or little tricky caps. So let's put this one on. Thank you so much, and see you next time.